Just for this, this is the condensed rule book for the drone soccer rules. That's at any point. If you have any questions, concerns, or want to know how the game works more in depth, download this, check out the rule booklet. I recommend it. Put that right there. All right. Can I get a thumbs up? Everyone's good? Awesome. Perfect. All right. So, if you haven't seen the field before, this is what it looks like right here. You've got a red team area, you've got a blue team area, you've got the red goal on the red side, blue goal on the blue side. For you, uh, those of you that fly, you know what this looks like. This is showing off. No. So I'm going to go over a couple of the most important rules, things you want to know, especially if you're flying or if you're an audience member. It'll make more sense to you. So, the striker cannot fly through the, uh, the other team's goal from the back. Demonstrate this. So you have the defender, the striker going through the blue team's goal backwards. Can't do that, that won't gain you a point. What you can do, if you're a striker, go through the opposing team's goal forward. That'll score you one point. Additionally, defenders may not hover within the goal. What this means is if you're a defender and you're hovering within what I would consider, or the referee's discretion, halfway inside that goal, that is a penalty. I told the referees they're going to warn you first, so you're not just going to get penalties without knowing it. Hopefully you always know when you're in the realm of earning yourself a penalty. What you can do as a defender is hover, oops, uh-oh, just in front of the goal, just like that. That way you're not actually within it, so they cannot get out of the way. Additionally, defenders may not fly through the goal in the reverse direction. So, for instance, if you're a defender, you can't go through the back of your goal in order to prevent that strike from going through. You can only hover within in front of your goal. You can go through if you're a defender forwards, but as a defender you cannot go through backwards. Like I said, what you can do is go through forwards. Both the defender and the striker can go through any goal forwards. All right, players, coaches, coaches and spectators must exhibit respectful conduct at all times. What this means is don't do anything that's going to make yourself look bad. That goes for everyone, but I've never seen that happen. I like to keep it that way. All right, reckless flight may result in penalties and or removal. This is up to the discretion of the referee. In addition, I've never seen this happen, but for instance, let's say you're flying really haphazardly and you break the goal or the drone, you know, you intentionally destroy somebody else's drone, that's a no-go. That'll get you a penalty. Damaged or disabled drones should be immediately disarmed to prevent further damage. For instance, let's say you're flying around and your battery falls off the scrap, but it's dangling. Disarm your drone immediately, let the referee know that you are disarmed. Otherwise, they may start counting penalties against you. Again, they'll warn you first that you're going to start earning penalties, but just to be safe, make sure you let the referee know. Only the referee can physically interact with the drones as well as the arena. For instance, this happens to all of us. Our drone gets stuck on the side of the net. Players may not free the drone themselves. In the event your drone gets stuck, it is up to the discretion of the referee to free it. So, that's what I just said. In the event your drone gets stuck, you may tell the referee that you cannot free yourself using turtle mode, and they have the option to free your drone. After a successful goal, the striker and teammates must retreat back across the center line before attacking again. This is referred to as offsides. I'm sure you guys know how offsides works. So let's say the blue drone goes for the red goal, that blue drone that has to return to their side, not only does the striker have to return, the entire team has to return. So if you have people playing offense on that other side, they've got to do offsides as well. If your drone is disabled and grounded, you do not have to do offsides, just make sure the referee knows that you cannot physically do offsides. Here's an example of this, so the red striker goes through the blue goal, they've got to go around it, past that halfway mark. As soon as they do that, as well as the rest of the team, they can keep going for more goals. The way this will be indicated is with these flags here. So let's say that that striker goes for the blue goal and I'm the red referee. I'm gonna say, red boy, and I'm gonna keep my flag up until I see your entire team has done offsides. If you don't see my flag go down, that means you have not completed offsides. So make sure you get your whole team back there. As soon as you do, put their flag down. It'll go just like that. Teams, remember that there's two, at least two sets of eyes. Thank you, guys. Remember teams that there's at least two sets of eyes watching your drones at each time. Uh, there's you and then the ref. So if you're flying towards that center line and you're not sure if you're like right on the edge, if it counts if you're like far enough past it, back up a little bit further. Because if the ref doesn't see that your drone is past that line, they will not lower that flag and your team will not be scoring points. 
Great point. All right, before we get to questions, there are a couple more things I want to go over. As I showed earlier, only the team captain communicate with the referees, so make sure you keep that in mind. Additionally, you will have one striker per team. You get to have one interchangeable striker. So for instance, let's say you're flying, your striker goes down, captain lets the referee know to pause the match, match stops, all drones down, referee goes in, switches out the flags, which indicate the striker onto a new striker. If that striker, the second one, goes down to the same set, you cannot have the referee stop the set. The referee has to keep the set going. You get one replacement striker per set. All right, that just about covers everything I wanted to go over. Do I have any questions? No? All right.